let's talk just a little bit more about um, <clears throat> the refactoring we were doing in class last night. Um, is remember our key guidelines here. We want to promote reuse. We want to promote the single responsibility principle. So we want to be able to reuse each object that we create as many times as often. We want to promote single responsibility principle, which means each object or each method that we create ought to do one thing and one thing only and do it well. And we want to have loose coupling so it's easy, again, to promote reuse so that we can attach things quickly and, and um, not have a lot of deep knowledge of one object and another, which is the law of Demeter, making sure one object doesn't know a lot about the details of how another object works. And we've been using Angular to help us to achieve those goals. So last night we did some work on this HTTP census object, and I've done a little more work on it here this morning. And um, <clears throat> what we've done now is that as you remember, one of our objects needed to have both sorting of the results in order to graph it properly and the ability to filter out the ones that were zero. Well, I realized after a little bit that, um, that at least this object also needs the sorting to have the biggest ones first going down towards the smaller ones, right? So, um, that was one thing they were sharing in common. So there was a reason to move the, at least the sorting end in, in, into here. Um, the filtering, I realized we could just change with a single parameter. Remember before we were having to pass in this entire object. Now we can just leave the object in here and simply say, do we want to filter out the ones that are equal to zero or not? And so that makes this parameter, which was complicated, a lot simpler. The other thing I, rem I realized after a time was that we also needed to remove the first item from the list, and we probably, everybody wanted to do that. So that belonged in here. Um, so that added, that took things like making the state zip code a lot simpler because now it no longer has the um, sort and filter business in it. It's gone. So that makes it simpler. And um, making the call is still pretty clean. We pass in um, the state we want to work with, the zip code, and whether or not we want to filter. Um, filter out the zero items. And we don't in the one that, that we use to... Um, the one that's being used. That one is this one where you want to have the... Um, this this query here because you might um, find that uh, you might want to query one of the ones that has a zero population. Interestingly, this morning, you know, I remember I said there were two items in each array. For some reason this morning, I'm only getting one back. I don't know whether there's a bug in their code or whether they've decided to change whether they mirror back that data to you or not about what your query was. At any rate, um, <clears throat> so, so that's nice. That's that's kind of made life a little bit simpler. Whoops, this one doesn't look so pretty here. Um, I'm not going to try and change that right now. Um, one of the advantages of this is now that we can reuse HTTP census three times. So we're using it um, also in the all zips one. We were just looking at that, the one that retrieves all zips. Um, We're looking at that all the way down to the very lowest ones. They're sorted now, which is nice. We got that for free. And if we look at the code in all zips, it's extremely simple. All we have to do is call our census, which does the HTTP call. Then it's got the promise built into it. And then all we have to do is take the data that got responded. It already got sorted. We already had the first item taken out of it. And we just pointed at, at our all zips. Um, here, which is um, simply an iterator. It's just a repeat, ng repeat over the items in it. But so we've got a couple different things going on here now. 
um, we're able to reuse zip HTTP census three times. We're able to get this code and this code out of the methods where they don't need it and yet still keep this object fairly clear and simple. Each method in it fits well within our simple screen rule. This method fits within a single screen. This one certainly does. And um, this one does. So we're obeying all of our rules. It does one thing. It makes the query against the um, census data. And then it does things that are generally needed by everybody else. So that's, um, that's very nice. Um, so when you're doing these things, you know, sometimes it's so tempting to say when you're rebuilding code, when you're refactoring code, you're saying, well, I can do it shorter if I keep it in my method rather than refactoring it out. See, I can do it in two lines here while when I have to refactor it out, I have to create an object around it and suddenly it becomes four lines. But you've got those two lines or the three lines that you had or four lines that you had in your original program and you put them in one place, in this case in our HTTP census, and you, um, and you can reuse it multiple times. So you saved three lines the first time. The second time you use it, you, you save six. The third time you use it, you save nine. Plus, we're getting in these other features, which are really saving more like 15 or 20. By the time you're done, you're saving dozens or hundreds of lines of code. And in theory, we could reuse this thing over and over again. Plus, when they're well designed, they're so simple to use, right? You can have this loose coupling reuse where it's just whoop, really easy to, to write the code. Um, so let's see what else is in here. Um, the other thing that I ran across was this issue. We discussed it briefly in class and then never really got around to it. We needed to check in some of the queries if the if either the promise, remember this whole point of the semaphore here was to check, um, is our code, um, do we need to query the, the database again? Do we have to go off and query the census or can we just reuse our old data? And our basic check is to say, is the promise been created? And if it's not been created, then run the query. Otherwise, let's just keep reusing the data. But we had that case where the zip might change. Well, it turns out that um, when we're running our graph zip, where we want all the data, where when we ask, we're asking for all the data, it turns out that that doesn't break this code at all, right? It says if the zip has changed, and so if there's no promise, and if the zip haven't changed, and if the zip never changes, then and the promise is created, this code ends up working anyhow. So um, this code ends up, um, this, this adding this check-in didn't cost us anything. We do have to save the zip for the one case where we want to save the zip, but it's just, it's not a very big loss here. It's, you're, you're, you're getting pretty picky if you're too consumed with that particular problem. So another one here is this remove first item method that we created in here. <clears throat> and then I can understand how some people would say, well, why do you create a separate method for remove first item? Why don't you just have that single line of code in there? The reason is mostly because it promotes, that it, it gives us a nice clean name, right? We don't like comments because comments force us, we, we, nobody updates comments but we update method names. We say, does this method actually do this? It makes us look at it. And also when we look at it, we look at the line of code. It's become a very simple line of code. It's not part of a bunch of other things. It's its own method. It helps us focus on the method. And as Tanya mentioned last night, maybe um, we could use a different method in here, um, such as shift instead of splice. And so it makes us focus on it and think about it all. So, and, and remember, not everyone knows what splice does. We all do in this class now, but not everyone does. So someone who's new to this code, maybe is a great C++ programmer, but not so good at JavaScript, won't know what splice does. By describing it, everything's clear, yet you don't get into the aesthetic disaster of a comment that's usually an admission of failure, that you were unable to name your methods and your, ob and your um, objects correctly. Um, Another thing that we did here along that same line is we, in zip graphs, we factored out three methods. Um, before, 
in zip graphs. This code, the get zips method, was fairly long, and it contained this code, this code, and this code. Well, we, we, we factored those out. We, we chose refactor extract method, and we pulled them out. And look what happens when you're done. You end up with a single object where it says set the range of the graph, okay? So we're saying what, so it's set great range of the graph here decides, do you want to get the top? Do you want to get the bottom or any other options that you might have? And it's kind of self-descriptive. What does it do? Sets the range. Then it says get data to graph. And the get data to graph is again, one of these one line methods. It's done as a slice based on the decisions that we made up here. It slices off the chunk that we want to graph. But get data to graph is descriptive. It describes what it does. So we know what this slice method, again, everything we were saying before about short methods. And then define Google chart data, which is the data we're going to pass into our chart. And that describes what this kind of cryptic code does, because it is a little bit hard to read with these funny variable names like C and V and what the heck is it doing? Well, it's defining the data that the Google chart wants. So who really cares? It's pushed away up here. It does it and it creates it for us. And then we're able to, we have our get chart method, which of course we've got passed in from a, uh, we talked about last night is passed in from another factory. So this method, which was complicated, suddenly becomes very simple. And all our rules are being obeyed here that um, the get zip method fits easily in one screen. The define Google chart data fits easily in one screen. This one's easy to understand what it does because without the aesthetic blot of a comment, it actually describes its purpose. And then set graph range again fits into one screen. So we're able to fairly quickly and fairly easily um, achieve our goals here. Okay. Um, and that's it. That's all I wanted to say, but I wanted to make sure that um, you'd had a chance to see the next step in the refactoring and why refactoring is an iterative process. Last night we made progress with it. This morning, in some ways, I reaped a lot of the benefits of the work we did last night because once I had the HTTP census object, then it was really zip HTTP census. Then it was really easy to see what to do with it and how to make it better, more reusable, how to make it more useful. But the first step was factor it out, get it out there so that we could reuse it. And now we are reusing it three times and having it do a lot more than we thought before. And it's greatly simplifying our other code, most explicitly here, where it allows us to do something pretty useful, which is to get all the zips back and sort them and get rid of the bad record with, with essentially two lines of code. You know, it's essentially these two lines of code just couldn't be much simpler. Um, those are the goals that we're always shooting for, always shooting for our design principles. We want to make it reusable. Excuse me. We want to make it reusable. We want to make sure each object does one thing and does it well. We want to promote loose coupling and we want to promote don't know too much or don't have one object knowing too much about the other. These concepts are interrelated. In other words, loose coupling promotes reuse. The law of Demeter promotes loose coupling. The single responsibility coupling principle also promotes loose coupling because it helps us create objects that are easy to use because they don't reuse because they don't um, have too much functionality inside them. I just, I'm a little bit of a broken record, I know, but I, I can't talk can't emphasize enough how important these principles are, how important it is um, to use these things in your code. You, you want to get, keep things as simple as possible. This is sort of our ideal, right? This is the ideal. This is what we want to achieve. A short, simple object that does something really powerful. Okay, I'll stop. Um, thanks now. Have fun with this and enjoy it.